everybody, Omar here, the knife of the party guy, and I am back with another fun-filled video for you. And today's discussion, Chris Reeve knives. Now, I have done this video uh, at least three times, and I don't think I ever really got my point across. So we're going to make this trial number four uh, for Chris Reeve knives, trying to see if I can explain what this guy is all about. Uh... To open, I'd like to just say this much about Chris Reeve. He has got the biggest balls in knife-making history, and I say that with all due respect. There is no other knife-maker out there that you can even compare his knives to at all. It's just not possible. Chris Reeve knives are undefinable, and on this video, I'm going to try and see if I can convince you guys, or at least try and, and, and explain why I believe that to be. So, when I first started collecting knives about, I'm going to say it's going on now, eight years uh, of knife collecting. Uh, I collected from the three, uh, three or four best knife companies that I really got myself involved in, which is uh, Spyderco, you know... Spyderco, and then I got into ZT, and then Benchmade, uh, pretty much all at the same time. Uh, and I found all of their knives were going off of the same bar, the same similarities. Uh, each knife maker trying to do those particular, uh, those particular categories and trying to up each other in that category. So they were trying to beat each other, you know, kind of trying to say who's got the best action, who's got the best models, who puts the, out the best steels, who's got the best action, all that stuff. These three companies and all other companies similar to those, to these guys, were all doing the same thing. So you got these three companies all fighting for the same, uh, I guess for the same uh, top category of who's the best, right? And then there's Chris Reeve. <laughs> Chris Reeve, basically what he did, and this is why I say he's got the biggest balls, he let these guys do that all on their own. Go ahead. You guys go ahead and argue. You guys go ahead and fight. Do whatever you want to do. Uh, you know, put out all these really cool models. Put out different... Uh, you know, put out really cool models, go ahead and add ceramic bearings or add, uh, you know, tool steel bearings, whatever you want to do to your ball bearings. Go ahead and put out a variety of steels. I'm going to go do my own thing over here. <laughs> I don't even have to worry about what you guys are doing because you guys are not even doing anything that I'm doing. And I'm not doing anything that you guys are doing. That's basically the philosophy behind Chris Reeve knives. Now, technically, the way it works is this. You get into these knives, you know, the Benchmades, the CRKTs, uh, you know, the Spider Co's, the Zero Tolerances, whatever knife company you were, you're into at that time. Uh, and I only may, named these three main uh, knife companies because everybody pretty much knows them. You know, they're not... They're big, big knife companies, all three of these guys, right? Let's put these here. All three of these guys are, are really, really big knife companies. And then we have Chris Reeve. So you go through this whole bunch here and whatever other knife companies you want to get into. And then you discover Chris Reeve. And then you realize something <laughs> when you buy your first Chris Reeve knife. This guy doesn't do anything at all that these guys over here are doing. Just to give me an example, all right? I mean... <laughs> Zero tolerance, their action, right? He's got the really super smooth action on tool steel ball bearings, right? I mean, I barely have to even... Uh, it's almost practically drop shut on these knives, right? I mean, and that's what we love. We love this stuff. We love our knives to do that. Then you get Chris Reeve. <laughs> I have to laugh at this. I mean, if you can imagine having gone through all this, then you buy your very first Chris Reeve knife, right? And it's the first time you're ever going to flip it, and you're just like, okay. <laughs> it doesn't have ball bearings in it. It's made with washers. So you are it's not like you're disappointed, right? You, because, let's be honest, the knife is smooth, right? 
but it's not the kind of smooth that I'm used to over here, right? So right then and there, Chris Reeve is doing something completely different. Uh, he doesn't do ball bearings. He does washers, <laughs> okay? Uh, but yet his knives are still smooth. You know, they're, they're smooth. While these companies use words like, well, the smoothness is drop shut, uh, they don't use the word drop shut with Chris Reeve knives. What they use is a completely different term in smoothness. They use hydraulic. His knives are hydraulic. You hear that over and over and over again as you're, you know, you know, getting into your production knives that are top quality over here. Uh, but they're saying the Chris Reeve knives are hydraulic. I mean, and you're just like, yeah, they are hydraulic. Just doing that alone... Uh, and and allowing people to embrace that concept immediately puts Chris Reeve on a different category than these guys. That's one. So there's there's one right there. He's he's smooth like these guys are smooth, but he's smooth in a different way. Okay, that's one. Secondly, uh, steels. <laughs> he doesn't put out very many variety of steels in his uh in in the way he makes his knives um he just doesn't uh he he used and i'll explain why he used s35 vn for the longest time and uh when he came out with his new line uh the uh sabenza 31 he switched over to s45 vn <laughs> And you're just thinking, well, what? you're going to upgrade. Why not really upgrade? Why not go do M390? Why not go do one, you know, CPM 154? Why not do some other steel? He decides to stick with S35VN and then upgrading it to S45VN. That's Chris Reeve. That is just what this man is all about. So uh, even his location... Okay, the guy's from South Africa, right? But he starts a knife company in Boise, Idaho, of all places. You know, it's kind of like he wants people to know he's from South Africa. But at the same time, he separates himself from even his contemporaries that are, uh, you know, nowhere near, uh, you know, as big as he is as far as who he is as a knife company. Uh, you know, and pretty much in fit, in finish, in quality, uh, he has set the bar. They don't necessarily have to be following it the way that he does it, but they have to reach that level of fit, finish, and quality that this guy does. Um, because, again, Chris Reed, nobody beats this guy, not only in fit, finish, and quality, uh, not only in, um, in, but also in customer service. Nobody beats this guy in customer service. And I'll explain, okay? All the knives on this table, with the exception of these two here, I can actually take any one of the, of the four that you see on this table. Not these two, but these two knives here. I can take them into Chris Reeve and have them get what's called the spa treatment. Uh, that's where he basically takes the knife and makes it completely brand new all over again, free of charge. That's right. He does it free of charge. If I screw up my Benchmade, can I take them? Can I take this knife to Benchmade and have them make it completely brand new again? No. Same thing with Spyderco. I can't do that. They weren't. They don't have that in their uh, guarantee. But Chris Reed does. So even in customer service, he's separating himself from the pack. Uh, thirdly, this guy's kind of, as far as like variety of knives and what you can have on your knives, he's not crossing over because at least on his knife, you can now have inlays put on it. Um, this is the uh, Chris Reeve and Kosi. Uh, and, you know, I'm going to redo the video for all these knives. I'm just talking about Chris Reeve knives in general. But I will be doing a video again on all on all Chris Reeve knives, you know, 
in you know and and going over the knives and uh what's fantastic about each of them at a later date uh, which i've already have so if you guys want to check that video out but i thought I'll, I'll definitely update that but in any case as far as what you can have on your on your knife what uh, varieties of inlays you can definitely have different kinds of inlays on the knife uh i mean he, he allows that he puts inlays on both sides of the knife he's the only knife maker that does do that uh which is pretty fantastic so this is pretty much the uh, beginning of you getting into into uh, a custom like knife because this is not a custom knife company. This is a production knife company with custom like accents on the knife. So it's kind of like you're getting a custom without it being a custom because what makes him so unique is that. Uh, the way he makes his knives, he uses the latest tech out there to make his knives. Uh, he's not a made-by-hand knife maker. He is a full-time production company. Uh, Chris Reeve Knives is now in semi-retirement. His son, I believe his son's name is Tim, Tim Reeves. He's now taken over the company as the face of Chris Reeve Knives. And uh, yeah, they are a production company, definitely. Um, without a doubt. Now, as far as the warranty, and I, I, I kind of, I'm kind of jumping around here, so I apologize. But as far as the warranty goes, these two no longer uh, qualify for the spa treatment because I had them anodized. As soon as you do anything to the knife outside of what it was originally, you cannot go and get the knife. Um, give it a spa treatment, which is actually okay because there are people on Instagram that will take your Chris Reeve knife and bring it back to life, make it brand new again. There are guys out there. If you search on Instagram, you'll find that they have people that are willing to do that to your anodized versions of the knife or whatever you decided to do to your Chris Reeve knife to destroy the warranty on that. But these four definitely qualify. And this one actually already went through it already. Um, I've actually used this one quite a bit. Um, yeah, and it gave me Vantan. And again, e even though it looks a little bit used, I can go back to Chris Reeve anytime and have them uh, make it brand new again all over. There, it is limitless as far as getting the knife. Um, as far as getting the, uh, the knife that spa treatment, you'll be able to do that. Like I said, there's no other knife company. None of these guys will do that, but Chris Reeve does that. That's how much he stands behind his product. Uh, again, he used the latest tech to make his knives. Uh, he, with him overseeing everything personally, back in the day when he was, uh, you know, heading Chris Reeve, and now his son does that. But yeah, he oversees every aspect of every knife that even leaves his factory. We don't know the name of the guy that does it for Spyderco. We don't know the name of the guy that does it for Zero Tolerance. But Chris Reeve, we know Chris Reeve is looking at our knives. So that means that at one point, Chris Reeve at least saw this knife before it left the factory. And made sure that it was top quality before it got into the hands of a customer. This is exactly what I'm talking about. There's no other knife company out there that does that. And this guy does that 24-7. What frustrates uh, people about Chris Reed is that he doesn't believe in change all that much. He basically goes by the concept that if it ain't broken, you don't fix it. Uh, when he does any changes on his knives, they're so minimal, you almost don't even notice it. I mean, I, you know, the thing with the, with the steel, bumping it from S35VN to S45VN, is that really a change? Uh, he added on his knives, which is not on this knife, instead of the, uh, the tent ball being, uh, tool steel, uh, the tent ball, now he's using ceramic the tent balls? I mean, is that really... The kind of change me as a knife buyer want to hear about? Probably not. Uh, but it is what Chris Reed considers important in his knives, and he believes that that's going to be a better experience for you uh, as a customer buying his knives. Those little subtle things that he does uh, to his knives. When he puts out a new knife, it's like, you know, it's almost like a volcanic explosion just happened because he never put he, he hardly ever puts out new knives he'll put out a new knife maybe once every seven years where these guys put try and put out knives every year 
So again, Chris Reeve is doing his own thing. He believes in doing his own thing. Plus, his old models never go away. Whenever he adds a new knife to his uh, to his collection of what you can buy, he doesn't let these old knives go away. He keeps them. He keeps them. Uh, well, I can't say that that's actually true. He he does he does discontinue some models. Uh, the Chris Reeve T lock is no longer around. Um, which I think is a sad thing. I mean, it, 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 I'm kind of depressed because that's actually what I want to have in my collection is one of those knives. But yeah, when he, you know, most of the, the main models in his collection, they don't disappear until Chris Reeve wants them to disappear. So for example, the Sabenza 21 never really went away, right? It just became the Sabenza 31 with one inlay instead of two. <laughs> I mean, that's basically considered a change in the Chris Reeve knife company. Um, I, I don't know how, how I can really just convey how hard this man tries to separate himself from these guys here. So basically the way he markets himself is if you've gone through the Benchmades and the Spartacos and the Zero Tolerances and the CRKTs and whatever heavy production knife companies you've gone through, come and see me and tell me what you think of my stuff. But he, when he does that, when he invites you into his world of night making, he's going to make sure that uh, what he has to offer you is so freaking awesome, you're going to forget about these guys while you're in his, while you're you're looking at his knives. You're not going to remember these guys for those few hours, minutes, whatever. That you're actually taking the time to look at his knife. You're not going to be able to go and look at his knife, his Sabenza 21, and go, uh, man, this doesn't feel like a zero tolerance. I kind of like zero tolerance better. He's not going to give you that opportunity. And the reason that he's not going to give you that opportunity is because there are no qualities on this knife that you can even compare with any of these guys. You see what I'm saying? These guys do their own thing and want to do the, what they do the way they do it. Um, and it's just the way the guy is. He wants to separate. He believes in what he believes, and he wants you to value highly what it is that he believes, and you almost have to value highly what it is that he believes as a knife maker in order for you to enjoy uh, his knives. Uh, and if you don't do that, you're never going to be able to embrace Chris Reeve knives. It's just not possible. Uh, I mean, if you're picking up a knife and you keep the attributes of what you get in your zero tolerance knife in your head as you're looking at the Chris Reeve knives, you're going to think Chris Reeve knives are not all that fantastic. And there are people out there that have done that. Um, my buddy, uh, I got my good buddy James, uh, who's a big knife collector. He doesn't think much of Chris Reeve knives, but, you know, it doesn't, maybe he just doesn't understand that Chris Reeve knives operates on a new and different uh, bar than his contemporaries or what the other knife makers are doing. Chris Reeve knives and these knives, it's like apples and oranges. They're just completely different animals. They can never, ever be compared up against each other. It's just not possible. Um, and saying that is what makes Chris Reeve knives such a huge success because nobody's doing what this guy's doing in the knife world. Nobody. So when you talk about Chris Reeve knives, you cannot compare him to anyone else because he does his own thing. If you think about it, the guy, he, he's, his factories in Boise, Idaho, he oversees the entire production of all of his knives. The guy makes knives on his own planet. I mean, he is there working 24-7, hoping you'll forget who these guys are. And for that reason, I say that Chris Reeve Knives has balls. I mean, he really has got balls. I mean, you can sit there and say, man, I, I wish he put out a, a, a ceramic ball bearing knife. You can do that until you're dead. The man's never going to do it because he believes that what he has to offer you is just as good as that. Um, and even better. Even better. Uh I just, 
in order for you to embrace Chris Reed Knives, you have to embrace the Chris Reed philosophy, which is uh, probably similar to Apple. How about that? There's a comparison. Chris Reed Knives is actually the Apple of knives. That's basically what Chris Reed Knives is. He is the Apple of knives. So think about it. When uh, you know when they were coming out with all these different phones, it didn't happen. The iPhone made such a explosion because it wasn't anything at all like uh, you know any of the, the of the phones previous during that time. They were trying to come out with something completely different. So, in effect, the Sabenza Twenty One is actually the iPhone of knives. Uh, so you can consider these guys the HP. Uh, the Dell, you see what I'm saying? Which is why you really, and that's how Chris Reeve Knives needs to be looked at. I think I just did it. There you go. You, you have to just look at the, uh, at the brand Chris Reeve Knives as its own thing. But they can't be compared to what we have over here. It just is not possible. Uh, if we look at the way that Chris Reeve has developed his line. I mean, it's... Again, I can't describe it. You're going to have to hold one of these things to understand. But the fit, the finish, the quality. Um, he doesn't put out flippers, right? There's no flipper knives on, on Chris Reeve knives. He doesn't do flippers. He does thumb studs. And uh, some people may not even like his thumb studs. Because they're pointy and they're painful. And you have to kind of figure out a way to actually open the knife so that it's comfortable for you uh you know for me i just it took me a while to come around to it you know the fact that the action is not you know drop shut smooth but considered hydraulic i mean he hydraulic is good i gotta say that hydraulic is good there's nothing wrong with having a knife that has that a attribute as far as um the smoothness goes you know what i'm saying um, it's, he's just on another planet, a completely different planet. And when you, if, if you are looking to get into Chris Reeve knives, I guess what I'm saying is if you're looking to get into Chris Reeve knives, just wipe the slate clean. Don't think about Benchmade. Don't think about Spyderco. Don't think about Zero Tolerance. Just act like you've never held a knife in your entire life. And then go and check out a Chris Reeve knife and make up your own mind. Uh, it's, it's frustrating when you uh, go on YouTube and you see videos of Tim Reeves trying, you know, at shot shows, trying to explain... <laughs> Uh, what, you know, what they've done or what they have new, new this year with Chris Reeve Knives. Uh, the first words that come out of the guy's mouth is, well, as you guys know, we, uh, have very small changes done to our knives. We do them in increments. You know, he's, he's struggling so hard to keep pushing that uh, understanding that, Please don't expect anything on this knife to be on this knife because it's not going to happen. But what we can guarantee is whatever we're doing is going to, right now, that you like, if you are a Chris Reeve knife owner, uh, we promise that it's going to be an improvement that you're going to enjoy and is going to make your knife using experience even better. Uh, and, I, and I just feel kind of sorry for Tim Reeve because he's trying so hard to do that and it just isn't I mean for him he's just not able to get that across uh, but for the for some of us that have bought Chris Reeve knives and understood what Chris, Chris Reeve is doing uh, by separating himself um, we do enjoy Chris Reeve knives as soon as you embrace that philosophy that hey my name is Chris Reeve I don't make knives like these guys do. I'm doing my own thing. Maybe you might want to check out what I have and what I do. I will do the best that I possibly can to explain what I'm doing here and what it is that I do on my knives that's going to make you love me. And the man has been doing that since 1978. Uh, and, and he's still trying to do that today. Uh, and you've still got some people out there that are doubters of Chris Reeve knives. 
they're going to sit there and say, I held a Chris Reeve ninth. I wasn't very impressed. And the reason they weren't really impressed was because they were trying to constantly compare it to the big production knives that are out there today. And you cannot do that with Chris Reeve knives. When you get a Chris Reeve knife, wipe the slate clean and start all over again because you're not, you're not going to ever really embrace or enjoy Chris Reeve knives unless you do that, unless you wipe the slate clean. I think I pretty much got my point across as far as why Chris Reeve knives is so revered in many cases and so well loved and in a lot of cases very well uh, probably hated. Uh, whereas a company like Apple, they were embraced. Uh, believe it or not, I think Apple is still doing that today. They're still trying to struggle with trying to explain themselves to a lot of people. I mean, you got Android users out there that are going, yeah, you know, Apple isn't all that great. Well, the same thing with Chris Reeve knives. You've got people out there going, you know what? I think ZT is the greatest knife company ever. I really don't see myself getting into Chris Reeve knives. It's just not going to happen. Um, so I guess if you want, and I forgot to mention also the price, which is kind of important in this video. The price of a Chris Reeve knife is anywhere between, I'm going to say, $475 and $575. Somewhere right around that range, whereas you can pick up a zero-tolerance knife for like $240, $250, right? Uh, these knives here, with the exception of the Benchmade Anthem, uh, right, they stay within that $200 price point. Chris Reeve, all of his knives are way over uh, $500. So you're so that's another barrier you're going to have to break as a knife buyer once you've gone through these guys. Uh, <clears throat> you're going to have to wipe the slate clean anyway. So I mean you're you're spending five hundred dollars on a knife. Think about this. You're going to be spending over five hundred dollars on a knife that does not have any of the. Same attributes as these knives here that you're probably used to. So when you make the decision to purchase your, your Chris Reeve knife, you really, uh, you're going to have to just, again, I keep saying this, wipe this slate clean, spend the money and check it out. And guess what? Here's another great thing about Chris Reeve knives. You will never lose the value of a Chris Reeve knife. Why? The spa treatment, guys. You pay $500 for this knife and it gets all beat up. Use it to your heart's content. Beat it to hell. Use it all you want. You spent $500 for it, right? When it's all beat up and all ugly, take it in and have Chris Reeve do a spa treatment. It's going to look brand spanking new, right? Now, you can take it, put it back into the box and sell it. For the same exact amount of money you bought it for. You can't even say that it's a used knife once it goes through the spa treatment. Because you can go ahead and sell it <clears throat> to someone else for the same exact amount that you bought it for. If you don't like it after you send it in for the spa treatment and get your money back. Anytime. Just don't anodize the knife like I did. Uh, I, mean, I mean, when I did this, this was a conscious thing that I did. Um, I decided to analyze mine. I said, you know what? I love Chris Reeve knives. I have no intention of returning them. Uh, it's fine if I can't do that. I'm going to go ahead and analyze it. I knew what, exactly what I was doing when I did this. Um, <clears throat> so, I mean, just think about that it, as far as... So hopefully this video has helped you to understand that Chris Reeve knives, yes, they are, they are very, very worth it because what they have to offer... Even though they are nothing like these knives, and these knives are what I'm used to as a knife buyer. When I go over here, you you know you sh you can automatically just have Chris Reeve confidence that you're going to enjoy your knife. Because keep in mind, Chris Reeve, and this is why I say he's got balls bigger than no one else in the knife community. He is doing his. These guys are trying their best to build you a great knife, right? A great knife. That's what these guys do. 
they are in the business of building you a great knife, a great product for you to use. Okay, here's the difference. Chris Reeve is doing his damnedest to make a knife that you're going to love and you're going to carry and you're going to have uh, for the rest of your life. <laughs> the rest of your life. He is expecting that this knife is going gonna, is gonna to serve you for the rest of your life. That's why he does the spot treatment. That's why he does what he does. That's what you're paying $500 for. You're paying $575, $675, whatever it is on a Chris Reeve knife, you're paying it for the fit, the finish, the quality, the philosophy, um, and the workmanship for the rest of your life. These guys aren't doing that. You have to understand when you buy a uh, when you buy a zero tolerance, there's going to be a point in time when the knife, uh, you know, isn't going to satisfy you anymore, and and that the company will no, no longer stand by it anymore. I mean, there, it's 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 just a guarantee. Chris Reeve won't. If the blade on this knife breaks, I take it into Chris Reeve. He's going to replace it. If an inlay pops off on this sucker, I take it into Chris Reeve. He's going to replace it. If the lanyard or anything, or maybe a screw pops out, he's going to replace it. He's going to make it completely brand new. He wants this knife in your collection for the rest of your life. He wants to be remembered for that. Uh, these companies here, as great and as awesome as they are, when you get tired of their knife, they're just going to make a new model. And hope you're going to love that model even better than the one you used to have. This one is going to be in your life for the rest, forever. This knife here will be in your life forever. And that is what Chris Reeve is all about. This is Omar, the, the knife of the party guy, signing off, trying to explain Chris Reeve knives again. Remember, if you're looking for a Steve Jobs in the world of knives, it's Chris Reeve. He's the guy. He's Apple of knives, and I think that's basically what I wanted to get my point across. Think different, right? Chris Reeve thinks different as a knife maker, and all of his contemporaries know that. And that's all I want to say in closing. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope you found this discussion video somewhat helpful. If anyone out there is considering buying a Chris Reeve knife, Definitely, my. if you're asking me my own opinion, yes, do it. Definitely do it. Save up your money to get one of these guys. I mean, it, I have, I've owned this thing, and I refuse to sell any of the knives that are on this table. I love them. I just absolutely love Chris Reed knives. And I am very well aware that he is, he does not do what his contemporaries do. Uh... He's just a class all by himself. Chris Reeve Knives. Again, Omar, the knife of the party, signing off, hoping you've walked away with some kind of understanding of who Chris Reeve is and what he believes and what his knife philosophy is. And I do hope uh, you've enjoyed this video. Please comment on my channel. I keep forgetting to tell you guys to do that. Comment on my channel. I want to hear what you guys have to say, what you think of Chris Reeve Knife. Do you agree with me that he does not operate on the same level as what these guys do? He's a completely different animal altogether. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, again, Omar Knife of the Party. Uh, please comment. And you guys have a wonderful and fantastic Saturday night.